So you're getting a puppy, but you have no idea whether to go for a boy or a girl. Well, in today's video, we're gonna help. Welcome back to The Canine Show. If you're new here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and on this channel, I make videos just like this one to educate people about the amazing world of our canine best friends. So if you are new here, please consider subscribing. Now, if you saw the last video that we uploaded last night, I finally introduced you to my new Connie Corso puppy named Mabel. Now she is a girl and one of the most common questions I've had since uploading that video last night was why is it I went for a girl over a boy? What's the difference between going for a girl and a boy and will I be breeding her? So in this video, I'm gonna explain all of those answers. Now, before I do jump into those answers, if you're new here, you might not know that I've actually got an online training course and my course of the perfect puppy course is exactly what I'm gonna be following myself when I'm raising my own Connie Corso puppy. So to everybody that's new to the channel that might not have seen the information about the course that I launched a few months ago, there is a link to it in the description box below. And to celebrate me getting a Connie Corso puppy and just to celebrate Mabel in general, I've slashed the price of that course in half so that everybody following this journey, if you want to know the really detailed step-by-step -step guide of how I train perfect puppies, you can check out that course down in the description box below. But let's get straight into the answer and we'll start with the really obvious generic answers to the difference between a boy uh, puppy and a girl dog. Now, obviously there's always exceptions to these things and as I'm going along, I'll kind of let you know what's a generalized answer and what's kind of more specific, but start Starting with the obvious stuff, boys tend to be bigger. So if, especially in the garden world, you're looking for the biggest dog possible, then you might be looking at going down the male route. If you want a dog that's a little bit smaller, but you're in love with a breed, but the breed's a giant breed, then maybe a female might be a better option because most of the time you're gonna get a smaller uh, variety of that breed that you're looking at. Now on top of that, obviously, you're gonna have the differing parts that come with all boy and girl species, and that's often very evident in a dog especially when you have a very large dog like a Connie Corso. If you go for a male, and especially if you go for an unneutered male, you are gonna have to be dealing with lots of uh, red rocket incidents where certain things are gonna be on show quite a lot. Now for some people that doesn't really matter whatsoever, it just comes with the territory, but for some people that's quite a big issue. And on the flip side of that, with a female, you're gonna be having a dog that isn't necessarily day to day having those flash shows all the time that you're gonna get with a male and especially a giant male but maybe once often twice a year you're going to be going having to deal with a female dog going through its season now that does inherently come with a little bit of mess there is some quite clever ways of managing it i personally just use an old pair of my boxers you cut a hole in so that they can pop their tail through and it soaks up most of those issues now if you don't do something like that you are going to find that you're going to have um, what they call spotting where you're going to get marks of a bloody discharge are going to be on the floor, on their bedding, on your furniture if you allow them. So that's something to bear in mind. Now obviously if you get the dog spayed, that's something you're not going to have to deal with. If you get the dog neutered, those common red rocket shows are going to be something that maybe you're not going to have to deal with, but it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. It still very much may happen and it can be as simple as just a dog sitting down in that position can force the, uh, the lipstick to emerge, should we say. Now often an unneutered dog will also be very humpy especially if they catch the scent of a female in season or just if they're a more humpy dog than others again a lot of people think that if you get your dog neutered that uh, will be fixed and won't happen but again it's not the case a neutered male can be just as humpy as a unneutered male and females can also show humping behaviors so these are again there's some generalized things there's some obvious things but they are things to consider so now we'll move on to other areas and before we do and before we I kind of discuss the very generalized overview of the temperament differences between a male and a female dog I want to really express that it isn't a one size fits all and it's definitely not the thing that you should be basing your decision on when you go and looking at a puppy what I was discussing yesterday's video of choosing the right puppy from a litter is far more important than simply going for a male or a female because between any litter you can have that uh, continuum that I was discussing in yesterday's video about being an outgoing independent strong willed dog versus a passive submissive very relaxed dog you can find dogs on that continuum in both males and 
female. So when I'm giving generalized overviews, you might have a female on this end of the spectrum that might be more associated with some male behaviors and a male that's on this side of the spectrum that might be more associated with some female generalized behaviors from the same litter. And it might look like I'm I've got no idea what I'm on about and I was completely back to front. So like I say, you should really always focus on the individual temperament of any dog, regardless of gender, and match that up with what it is that you're looking for as opposed to setting in stone as to whether you want a male or a female, unless there's obvious reasons like breeding or what we just discussed in terms of size or just a inherent desire for a certain gender. Um, but in general, like I always preach, you should definitely be much more focused on temperament and energy levels as opposed to genders. But with that said, there are some fairly widely recognized, generalized uh, differences between males and females. This is one of those areas within the dog world, like dominance, like different training methods, like cropping and docking, that is very hotly debated. And there's some people that are on team this side and some people that are on team this side, and they both have their examples that they can call on and they just at each other's throats all the time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you what my opinion of a very generalized differences between them are, but like I've just stated, my personal opinion is that you should much more base it on the individual dog's temperament as opposed to looking at the gender. So you should find the temperament and energy level that best matches you, and then that's the dog for you regardless of male or female. But now I've kind of done that... Um disclaimer as it were let's jump on to the overviews of what you can expect with male dogs very generalized now most people will agree that a male dog tends to be more reliable and stable now that definitely doesn't mean that on the flip side females are crazy what i'm saying about reliable and stable is that more they have a very much more settled emotional state so they in that way they're more reliable you can kind of expect more from them you're not going to get necessarily the waves where one day they're behaving in this manner and seem to be going through these emotions whereas on another day it could be completely different males dogs tend to be much more steady and reliable in terms of those kinds of areas and it's fairly generally accepted that males tend to be a little bit more bold they tend to be more independent and sometimes more aggressive or quick to aggression which is why male dogs are so commonly used in in military protection and police roles over females. Now, like I say, there is always exceptions to this and you can always find females working in those roles and females are outperforming males in those roles. Like I say, these are just very generalized ideas and stuff that you can kind of um, rely on. But like I say, don't take all this with a pinch of salt. It's not set in stone, but it's just the kind of things just to give you a rough idea and a starting place to work with. So when we're looking at females kind of on the flip flip side to the reliability is you're going to get a dog that might be more emotional. Now, for some people, that's a positive. For some people, that's a negative. Uh, on the negative side, like I say, you might find that it's a little bit more unreliable. But on a positive, it might, for a lot of people, it shows more, more character. It shows... Um, like a human who we all go through different moods and different emotional states, a female dog tends to be a little bit more like that in terms of their emotion and their moods swinging a little bit more than a male dog does and that can in some circumstances appear to be giving the dog more character and make them a little bit more interesting but again like I say pinch of salt you can find examples of very steady reliable females and quite crazy emotional up and down males these are just uh, very generalized statements females also tend to be a little bit less physical they don't necessarily like to rough house play as much as male dogs do so they much more prefer a gentle approach to play again Again, obviously exceptions both sides, but from a generalized statement, that does usually tend to be the case. And females usually meet, uh, reach maturity far quicker than their male counterparts do. Now, uh, for me, this is a very interesting topic because what that means is a lot of people think that females are more intelligent than males, but that's not necessarily the case. It just means that they reach maturity quicker. They go out of that adolescent stage where they're testing boundaries a lot quicker, which makes the obedience training easier. Now, a male will get to that point eventually and a little bit longer on, so they're definitely not less intelligent, but it does make female training easier just because you get out of that adolescent stage quicker 
which is quite widely accepted probably the hardest part of raising any dog is that adolescent stage so that's kind of my very rough overview to the question like i say it's not really a topic that i delve into too much it's not really something that i personally put much weight on like i keep banging on about i put far more weight on the individual temperament of the individual dog as opposed to kind of generalizing any breed and generalizing any gender of that breed you need to do a little bit more research into it than that for me but like I say, it's a question I get all the time. It's people not necessarily just even with just Connie Corsos. People want to know this more for all the breed of dogs. So that's kind of a generalized way to look at it and kind of something for you to base it on. The next question that kind of rolls on from that is why it is that I went for a female myself and therefore will I be breeding her? So for me, I went for a female and like I said earlier, based on the temperament of the puppy that it is I was looking for. Now, my wife really isn't a fan of the red rocket stuff that can come with a dog and a dog being overly humpy. So for her, she naturally leans towards wanting a female dog over a male dog. So that's something obviously I always take that into account. But when we were assessing the litter, like I say, the two my two favorite dogs, and I mentioned that when I introduced Mabel in yesterday's video, there was a boy. Now, if he wasn't taken, it would have been very difficult for me to choose between the boy and between Mabel and I wouldn't have really been choosing gender to make that decision I would have gone deeper into temperament testing both individual pups and that's what it was going to uh, end up on but like I say when I tested those two pups I know I highlighted those as the two dogs that I thought were best uh, the male was gone which left the female and that therefore made it a very easy decision for me now will I breed Mabel this for me is a more complicated question it's something that I've always been very interested in it's something that uh, you guys have asked a lot and I know that there would be um, eagerness from that because people find it very challenging to find a good breeder so for you to be able to follow my journey of the effort that I put into selecting my breeder the effort I put into selecting Mabel to raise her and then you to be able to follow the journey of me training and socializing and demonstrating such a high level temperament there would be a lot of interest in other families and other people that are looking for a family guardian to know that they're getting a pup from what obviously I'm um, not to sound big headed but what would be a very ideal circumstance uh, breeding a uh, dog has been something that personally it'd be quite interesting to do it'd be an interesting experience and working in the dog world being able to go through that experience with my dog and, and raising a litter of puppies and finding perfect people and helping them on their journey would be interesting to me and then on the flip side of that, I don't want to be contributing to dogs ending up in shelters. And like I've mentioned before, I'm an advocate of adopt and not shop. But like in the position I'm in, I do think there's scenarios where getting a puppy is important and especially in the family environment. So who knows, maybe in a year or two, I would definitely consider it if I could find a perfect stud. If I knew that there was demand for people that have very legitimate reasons for wanting a puppy and therefore would want to get one from me and from Mabel having followed this journey journey of this channel it's definitely something i'll be interested in i'm not making a decision today yes or no um it's something we'll cross that bridge when we come to it so if you are new here and that's something that would be interest of you kind of make sure you subscribe to this channel and subscribe to the new channel that we're going to be launching um, in the next day or two because that's going to be the vlog channel that's going to be following the day-to-day -day of living with um, a conic or so and that's where those kind of things would be much more applicable over to that channel whereas the canine show is going to maintain being educational about all dog breeds uh, and mainly the guardian dog breeds that we love here on this channel so i hope that video was helpful for I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it answered some questions that a lot of you guys have had. Super excited to be picking up Mabel. We're only a few days away now, so obviously we're going to be doing loads of videos on that very topic. Lots of different training videos, how I go about it, bringing you guys along for the view as well as just the awesomeness and cuteness that is a puppy Connie Corso. So if you are new here, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you're always notified of new uploads. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next episode of The Canine Show.